Hello, everyone. Welcome to Motivational Monday. Let's Good wait morning. To Christian Klug here, and I'm in cold upstate New York. I went and got my Howard Hanna winter hat back out because I had like, you know, three inches of snow in my yard this weekend. It's crazy cold here. <laughs> and you can't tell, but I have my velour, you know, hooded uh, Howard Hanna sweatshirt on here. So to keep me extra cozy and in Cleveland, Ohio, Northeast Ohio, where it is a cloudy 41 degrees, but we are going to heat things up here on Motivational Monday to 212 degrees. Uh, so Christian, tell me a little bit, how's your uh, market life been well, in the last week? Despite the cold weather, our real estate market here in upstate New York has been very, very much active. Uh, my office has sold a number of properties this weekend. I was just on the off uh, on the phone with an agent uh, before uh, before now, and he just uh, had multiple offers, got a property and contract. I was handling a, a newer listing this weekend, and one of my agents sold it, and so. Lots of contracts going on, and, and I was uh, sharing some stats with Melissa that our demand for the first 10 days of May is up 30% what it was from the whole month of April. So in terms of the number of units selling per day, we're, we've seen a 30% increase just in the last 10 days versus April. So we're, we're seeing, and, it, and we are still, quote, shut down. We're doing things virtually, <laughs> and we technically can't show houses, so we're being real creative to make it happen. So even with all the restrictions, we are busy, which is good. How about you? Well, that is fabulous. I'll tell you, we, you know, it seems like things are really picking up. Uh, buyers right now, boy, they're in some multiple offers. So if we're trying to get the word out, if you are a seller, now is the time to list the house. Um, that's for sure, because there is definitely some pent up demand and there is definitely um, buyers who are out there. It's just a matter of finding the house on the market for them. So we are going strong after the listings and, you know, getting that word out to encourage everybody to Get their house on the market so it, it, it's busy though it, it's you know we're happy to see that and our open house activity is amazing and i mean our virtual open house activity i love to see the creativity of everybody and for you know those who are listening right now if you did not have a chance to watch um Kobe's town hall on friday the first half hour of it was geared towards the virtual open houses and what we are doing as a company and what you can do to take them to the next level. And I do believe that virtual open houses are here to stay. So uh, we all need to get very comfortable with them. Yeah, you know, there are some benefits of this shutdown, right? So in New York, we're not allowed to go to home inspection. So I was just on the phone with an agent and I went, oh darn, I can't go sit at the house for three hours and read a book and act like I'm supposed to be there. Like, I hate going to home inspection. So the fact that we can't, I'm like, that's like manna from heaven. Thank you. I'm happy. <laughs> oh, that's anyway, funny. but I'm excited to learn about 212 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and put myself on mute and I will be taking the questions. So please put your questions and comments in the Q&A or the chat box. I will be uh, handling them for Melissa. So that way at the end, we will do the Q&A. So I'm going to go ahead and put myself on mute. And don't forget the follow along worksheet that Melissa sent out. It should be in your invite. I have mine all printed and I am ready to learn. So Melissa, bring it. All right. Well, first, because everything he's building on, it, on it, you know, what we've been doing with these motivational Mondays. So let's go back a couple of weeks again. Week one, you were talking about the MPH squared, which is the mindset, plan, habit of hard work. That is one of the basic foundations that everything comes back to and that we keep building upon. In week two, we talked about E plus R equals O. This is huge. The event plus the response equals the outcome. Yes, we have our, um, I think some of you I see raising your hands with your, with your bands on there. Um, focusing on the response. Focusing on what we have 100% control of is the key. And there are a lot of you out there who are focusing on the, on the R. So we have our green penguin E plus R equal O bracelet. We love your emails telling us what you've been doing to stay proactive, what your response has been, how you're taking 100% control of your actions. So if you are on here and you do not have one of the green bracelets. All you need to do is email 
uh, myself, you know, Copy Christian, email one of us and let us know one thing that you are doing proactively or one thing that you're doing as a result of, of this, you know, session today. Um, and be sure to include your home address and we will, you know, be sure to send you one of these in the mail right away. So congratulations. We love all of our Green Penguin Motivational Monday community that we are uh, developing here. So continue to pass the word for others to for others to join us. Week three, we talked about focus. So F, eat the frog, one thing at a time. Concentrate on your goals. Use your time wisely and starve your distractions. And week four, we talked about the dip and the, the little book that shows you that, boy, a little bit more effort. You know, when you go through the dip, when things get tough, this is the part that really separates those who strive for greatness, those who will come on out at the end, those who will, you know, survive and thrive throughout, you know, things like this. And last week in week five, we talked about the negotiator. And Christian talked about the book, Never Split the Difference, which is one of my favorite books. Um, and negotiating tips to help make you a little bit stronger. And week six, like we said, we are going to turn up the heat and talk about 212 degrees. <laughs> Sounds pretty good right now when we're talking about this 41 degree weather. Let me back up a little bit. Probably about 15 years ago, I was heading out to a real estate conference and you know, tell my husband, hey, why don't you come with me? Why don't you join me on this real estate, you know, conference? So he came and my husband is a high school teacher and a high school football coach. So he's not in the industry, but he came and, and went to a lot of these different sessions with me. Well, there was one session that we went to um, that was based on 212 degrees, which is that one extra degree. And he put into action 15 years ago some of the lessons that were learned there. And I'll share with you a little bit more about his story later to show how things can be applied, you know, in any type of capacity in any, in any business um, when you learn a lesson like this. But let me give you a little bit of a history and a little learning of what 212 degrees actually means. So at 212 degrees or at 211 degrees, water is hot very hot water at 211 degrees. You add one more degree at 212 degrees, it boils. So it goes all that time to reach the 211 degrees, start getting warmer, warmer, hotter, hotter, add one more degree and it boils. And with boiling water comes steam. So by adding that one extra degree, now all of a sudden you have, you have steam that develops. And with steam, that can power a locomotive. Now think about that for a second. At 211 degrees, when the water is extremely hot, a locomotive stays where it is. You add that one more degree and it can power a locomotive. It can make that train move. It can put everything into action. That one extra degree makes all of the difference in the world. And just think, even like we talked about with the dip a couple of weeks ago, sometimes people stop before they get to that extra degree. They stop, you know, when it's more comfortable. They stop instead of taking things to that extra level. And it's that one extra degree, I mean, in business and in life, that separates the good from the truly great. And we talked about it a couple of weeks ago that you have to be the best real estate agent that there is in, in the, your client's world and what options they have available and who they know that you have to be to strive to be the best in the world and to be um, great. And that's what separates again, the good from the great is that one extra degree. So you look at the average margin of victory, you know, in the last, um, you know, 24 major tournaments was less than three strokes. Now think about that. They play for days, you know, however many strokes, and all of a sudden that margin of victory comes down to less than three strokes. The margin for victory, 
between Olympic gold medals and no medal at all is extremely small. I mean, in 2004, the men's 800 meter race, the margin of victory was 0.71 seconds. Now, I didn't say seven seconds. This is less than one second was the margin of victory that took you between a gold medalist and not being on the podium at all. Working all of those years, your whole lifetime, to make it to that moment. And it's determined by less than one second between the good and between the truly, truly great. At the Indy 500, the average margin for victory for the past 10 years has been 1.54 seconds. And have you ever seen one of those Indy races? I mean, it's incredible, the, just the amount of laps, and it comes down to 1.54 seconds. And on average, the winner took home $1.2 million, and the second place prize was 621000 almost half of what the other person did in one second. Look at what that one extra degree of effort does in terms of you know, what your profit is. You look at it and go, it's your life. You are responsible for your results. That's what we've been talking about with your R, with your response, with your proactivity, with your action. So to get what we've never had, we must do what we've never done. So great materials with, um, you know, great materials. You know, we have that are with solid approaches have been created, they've been taught. So we've been listening to them, learning from them for, for months now, especially quarantine. Look at all of the webinars we've had. Look at all of the different learnings. Look at you know, all of the knowledge that we've had in front of us. I mean, not only just the last couple of months, but ever since we've been in this career and, and beyond. But the challenge is, action is often the part that's the missing ingredient. I, you know, people who know me have always said, hey, if it's an office meeting, if it's a webinar, if it's any type of learning, walk away with one item, at least one item, that you are putting into action. You don't want to have the smartest bookshelf in the world. You don't want to be all smart up here and not put it into action and be able to get the results of what you've learned. And that's oftentimes what's missing. So many times people learn and learn and learn. And it's like, okay, what are you applying? What is your response? And I know, again, many of you, because you're, you're wearing the green bracelet, have already put things into action. Don't stop. Continue it because that's what's going to set you apart as that 1%. It's that action that is often the missing ingredient. So 212 is not only a mes message of action, but it's a message of persistent and additional action. And I might have had two extra lines there on the handout if you're going through the handout. But make another persistent and additional action. We can't get enough of that. Um, and it's the continual application of the heat or the effort. Just think about that. You're, as, as the heat went up to 211 degrees, it, it happens one degree at a time, one degree at a time. And then all of a sudden, you get those exponential rewards that are possible with just that one extra degree of effort. And sometimes that, is the, that one degree is what takes you over the top, that one extra effort, that one other thing that you put into action. Now I mentioned before that my husband is a high school football coach um, and teacher. So, okay, so you have a football coach that goes to a real estate conference, listens to this about the 212 degrees. So some people would stop right there saying, okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put in an extra effort in what I do and what I coach. Um, and my husband tends to uh, live this philosophy and take everything to the 212 degrees. So it comes back and starts getting it on t-shirts. So that that way, anytime you're working out, anytime you're anywhere, you're, you know to put in that extra effort. Do a little bit more than you did the day before. A little bit more than that person who's right next to you. And then it went on sweatshirts um, in the area. So anytime people walk around, hey, we're, we're the team that puts in that 212 degrees. Then it goes into more t-shirts, you know, and, and this has been going on for 15 years that it's developed a culture. And again, for anything to work, it needs to happen um, continuously and persistently over time. 
this isn't like a one day tagline. This is a philosophy. This is a culture. This is just something that is now embedded over the last 15 years in, in any of these boys who have been through the, through the system. I left, this just popped up this week on my, on my Facebook post. Five years ago, my husband and I painted their, the weight room in the school building and we painted it at 212 degrees. So that way, just right in front of them at all times, it's like, oh, putting in that extra effort, right when you want to stop, right when you think you're getting tired, right when it might hurt a little bit. No, let me give it that one extra. Let me just do a little bit more um, than I did. And I'll tell you, they come in with intensity, these boys, and, and you can see it. You cannot walk into that weight room without giving it you know, your 212 um, degree effort. It's just, again, it's a philosophy that's embedded, embedded in you. And when you wake up thinking that every day, it's amazing how then that translates into everything that you do. Then we noticed probably about 10 years ago, uh, my husband teaches at a school on Madison High School. On Route 90, when we were getting off the exit, we're like, wait a minute, this is exit 212. It's amazing how sometimes the universe works. Here we've been working on this brand. He's been working on this, this brand and this culture and this philosophy for all of these years. And then we realized that, wow, this is exit 212. So now it's something that the whole community has started to embrace. And the parents are teaching their, their kids this. And you know, even when the, when the band's coming out and the, the team is coming out, you know, they're always focusing on the clock. There's 212 left to go before the start of the game. Now let's turn, now let's turn it up. Now let's get excited. You know, the fans are coming in with signs, go blue streaks, 212. You know, with that extra effort to, you know, as, as a memory peg for them. There's banners and flyers that are, that are all 212. The little kids in the schools are wearing 212 t-shirts. This year, um, my husband knew it was gonna be his last year because he was gonna be retiring at the end of this past season. So think about what we talked about. At 211 degrees, water's really hot. At 212 degrees, it boils. And when it's boiling, it comes steam. And what can steam power? A locomotive and a train. So what does my husband decide to do is have a fundraiser to raise money to have the 212 train for them to run through before they come out on the field. I mean, talking about getting players excited to play the game of football. Start, you know, talking about starting to get that mindset. You know, we're going back to week one, what's that, what's that mindset? It starts off from the moment, you know, even before they got on the field, but running through that tunnel, you know, it is intense. I mean, I think you can even tell by my husband's face as he comes on through. I mean, that is the face of a 212 effort, you know, as you're coming through and every player coming behind you. But it's that type of intensity that makes things, um, you know, that makes things succeed. So when my husband retired um, at the end of the year, they decided to surprise him with a couple of things. So everybody in the stands was wearing their 212 Forever t-shirts as a sign and as a tribute um, to him bringing this to the Madison culture. Um, with 212 left on the clock for his final game, uh, they stopped the clock to give a tribute to what he brought to there because it's such a community um, legacy right now. Um, you know, we had the, the 212 Forever cake. We all had our 212 Forever t-shirts. And then finally, there is a company, um, a production company from LA that heard about all of this and now is doing a four-part podcast that's coming out in August that has talked about the 212 legacy that has happened in Madison um, schools, you know, over the course of these careers. And, and if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see more about that coming up because um, I love to share those type of things. And everything you'll see in Madison is hashtag 212, hashtag 212 effort. But why do I bring this up and share all of these things with you? This is somebody who went to a seminar. It could have been listening to a, a webinar. It could have been a podcast. It could have been reading a book and put into action what they learned. Put into action that extra degree put into that action, that extra degree every single day with every single player, 
with every single conversation and didn't let it stop, where it became um, such a part, of, a part of him. So we look at it and say, okay, what are we doing every single day that's going to help us? It starts with a couple of different things. Number one is your attitude. And that we've talked about before. Your 212 degrees attitude. I mean, the only, diff, you know, the only thing uh, that stands between a person and what they want in life is the will to try it and the faith to believe it's possible. So if you have the worksheet in front of you, I just, this is something I want all of you to do. I have three little spaces for just you to write down things. And if you just, if you don't have it in front of you, just grab a sheet of paper um, so you can work on this later. But what are three things that you can do that's going to increase, make it a 212 attitude, that one extra degree of effort that you're going to have. You know, I just put one on here is the daily affirmation. When you wake up, what do you tell yourself? You know, here is the little sign that sits next to my bed that says, rise up and attack the day with enthusiasm. I mean, this is something that every day, I mean, I wake up and I look at that and it's, I repeat it, rise up and attack the day with enthusiasm. You can't say that and not smile, or you can't say that and not say, oh, I'm gonna, you know, roll over and go back to sleep. You know, you look at that and that's something that gets you going. So you think, okay, what is it with my 212 attitude? Some of the things we talked about before. Is it listening to music? Is it going out on a run? Is it turning off the TV? You know, what are those things that you're doing that's going to help with that 212 degree um, attitude? Another is 212 degree kindness. You know, it is one of the most um, beautiful conversations in life because we can never ever help, you know, and other people, you know, other people without helping ourselves. You know, it's something that, especially with what we're going through now and with this journey that we've been on, you know, so you look at, okay, how can I spread a little bit more kindness? You know, for, you know, for my husband and I, uh, you know, this past week we donated to something in our community called Harbor Hearts, where they are, um, you know, preparing meals for some of the elderly every Saturday. They cannot, you know, get out of their homes. And so we donated all of the desserts uh, for them. You know, maybe it's just calling somebody that you know is home alone. Maybe it's helping somebody at the, you know, at the store, going grocery shopping for somebody that, that may not be able to. So what is it that the 212 kindness? Maybe it's being more understanding of a co-broke agent or an agent on the other side of a deal. You know, that maybe, um, you know, maybe you just don't understand what else that they're going through. And it's just practicing kindness as you're going through those negotiations. You know, maybe it's just a little bit more of compassion and, and understanding, which could go a long way and keep and keep deals together. You look at the 212 degree belief. I mean, belief, this, this is so important because if you believe you can, I mean, that fuels the enthusiasm. And then the enthusiasm explodes with passion. If you wake up every day with the passion, I mean, that fires our souls, that lifts our spirits. You know, when you, you are so confident and believe that you can do it, um, there's nothing more important than that. And that's what your clients want. You know, they want somebody who believes. I mean, I am so confident that I can sell your house. I believe that we can still get the best price for it in this market. I believe that we can sell it soon. So what is your belief? I believe in my confidence and in my abilities right now that I can be creative in this market to be able to get homes sold and to work with buyers. I also believe that I can control my own destiny in terms of um, what I do every day. If I read for a half an hour or take a half an hour to work on my business, what can that get me? You know, studies have said if I read, if you read for a half an hour, let's say you read a half an hour a day and you do that for two months, they say that, and this is reading on something in your industry or something to help you grow, that you will be in the top 10% of your industry. And that's what's going to separate you. Think about that. I mean, it's, it's that difference. It's that 212 degree effort. It's taking that, you know, that extra degree to become really good at, at something. 212 degree focus. Is something Christian talked about a couple of weeks ago with the focus. Having a simple, clearly defined goal. 
that can capture the imagination and inspire passion. I mean, it can cut through the fog like a beacon in the light. And what is that? That is, that is having your, your goals, your written goals. I talked about the um, accomplish list. What is it that you want to accomplish today? What is it that you want to accomplish tomorrow? These aren't necessarily, and they can be, your annual goals. But for right now, chunk it down a little bit. What are your written daily goals? What are your written weekly goals? What is it that you want to accomplish? What is it want to learn? You have to plan your day before your day takes over. It's, it's so important. So look at the, the ways that you can increase your focus. What are those? Write it down. Because if you write it down, you're going to have a much greater chance at, at happening and coming true. Perseverance. I think this is a key one. I mean, perseverance is, it's not the long race. It's a series of many short races, one after another. This isn't like, oh, what's going to happen this year or this month? It's what's happening this hour, what's happening this day. What's happening this degree, this degree, this degree, this degree, until you take it over to the, to the next level, to the extra, extra degree. I also look at perseverance as getting out of my comfort zone. You know, I mentioned about the virtual tours, the virtual open houses before. You know, I've heard some people say, oh, we're almost done with this quarantine. I don't know if I'm gonna be ready for the virtual open houses. I may just wait and no, no, no. They're here to stay. Get out of your comfort zone. Try something new. When you try something new and you accomplish it, it it's amazing the feeling. It's like, wow, what else can I do? What next? That gets you excited. That fuels that passion. That fuels that belief. And all of this, all of this goes together. So it's so important to have that perseverance. Uh, that's what we talked about with the dip too. When, when you persevere and you persevere through that dip, whoo, it's going to be fun. And when you come out on the other side, because a lot of the competition won't be there anymore. And because people will see who's working hard and who has persevered. You know, there's three important words. And actually, before I get to those three actual, you know, three important words, I want you to think about what else you can apply the 212 degrees to. How about 212 degree service? I see a lot of your um, quality service comments come in um, from your clients. They're amazing. And so many of you, you know, if you're in my region, I, I comment to you, I email you back about them. <laughs> wow, I mean, what an amazing job you're doing. I mean, keep it up. Look at the different ways. What is it that you do that provides that extra service? Is it that extra phone call that you're making? Is it that, um, you know, is it the just calling them before they call you? Is it having the systems in place to let them know, boy, how to um, change utilities long before they ever, you know, think about that? Is it, you know, one team, one dream? The extra service by having us all work together with mortgage and, and with barristers. Uh, so what is it with your 212 service? You know, you also look at the 212 negotiations. Christian talked about this last week. Just think if you applied this 212 into your negotiations. After you think, boy, I don't know, this deal might not, this deal might die, this might bomb. I don't think it's going to work out. And you give it one extra effort. Let me just try one more time. Let me make one more phone call to the seller or to the buyer or to the other agent. So what if? What if we could do this? Maybe we were one phone call short of keeping that deal together. Maybe it's a call to the manager saying, let me brainstorm with you. What are your other thoughts here? Maybe it's getting another opinion. That's taking it to the extra level. That's putting it in, into that extra, that's putting it into that extra degree. It sort of goes with these three important words. And then some. When you think about taking it to the extra degree. I'm gonna make five calls today. And then some. Maybe I say, I, I may make a couple of more. Just think about it. If you make, say, one call a day, you know, and you do it, say, 20 days out of the week, um, or out of the month, I mean, 20 days out of the month, you're looking at about 240 calls a day. Year. Now that's just the one extra call. So let's say you said you're going to make five calls a day. You decide to do one extra for that one extra degree. You're looking at about 240 extra calls every single year. 
I'm not even giving you weekends off. Let's say you were to convert 5% of those calls that over the course of time, 5% of those calls ended up buying or selling from you. Because maybe you were calling, you know, past clients or people who came through your open house or, you know, people who were, um, you know, in your database. So if you converted maybe just 5% of those over time, you would be looking at another thirty dollars to $50,000 of income by doing that one extra percent, that one extra call. These aren't even from the five that you originally did. Now just think, boy, what if you did that every single year and even for the next 10 years? I mean, you could be adding an extra $500,000 to your income by taking it to that extra degree, by taking that extra result, by doing that, you know, that, that extra effort. Now look at it and say, all right, what if I woke up at seven o'clock instead of eight o'clock or six o'clock instead of seven o'clock? And I took that extra hour every day, five days a week to work on my business, to work on learning a new Howard Hanna tool, to work on studying a business book, to read more about negotiation, to learn about the personality type, um, you know, just to, to study other people in the industry imagine how much extra knowledge, I mean, you would be at the top 2% of the industry if you did that every single day and applied that to your business by putting in that extra degree, by making it that 212 degree effort. Well, think about it with open houses. What if you had one extra virtual open house a month or a week? Because with virtual open houses now, it's gonna be a lot easier to be able to to do them and to fit more in. What if you did it on a Thursday night? What the Cleveland City Office did this past week, be a little bit creative. What if you had your virtual open house at lunch every week? Or you know, on lunch on Mondays, whatever. Try to be creative with it. You can fit, you can fit an extra open house in, you know, possibly even every week. Imagine what that would do to your business when you look at the different views. But you have to think of the course of the day. If you put in one extra effort into all of these different things that you're doing, what it could really, what it could really do. That one, that one degree that you have to keep focused on um, every single time. So you are now aware that you now have a target for everything that you do. So it's time to turn up the heat to 212 degrees. So I thought that that would be very appropriate for today. First of all, as we're talking, because it sort of brings everything together, what we, we've talked about. Um, I even talked about, in one of the earlier ones, I was talking about the parasailing, and as you're starting to come down, how it gets exciting and how your adrenaline starts going, we're starting to come down off of this. It's getting really exciting. So that's why now it's, it's so important to turn up the heat and, and do that extra degree, because now it's what's going to separate you um, from everybody else. You know, it's the time to roll up the sleeves. Oh, I'm wearing like my, my 212 degree t-shirt right now too. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but again, that's even putting it in the mindset. Like, all right, I'm doing this. I have to, um, you know, get in the mindset. We have, um, if you Google 212 degrees, there are books that tell more about it. There is um, videos. There's the 212 degree video. So all you have to do is Google 212 degrees and you're going to find a wealth of knowledge in there. And you know, I, I showed the slide, but it didn't have the music to go with it. I mean, that really gets you, you know, in the mood too. So um, with that, Christian, and any questions? I, I've got to tell you, I had goosebumps when you were talking about your husband's I love sports analogies because, you know, I coach <laughs> my own kids' uh, hockey teams. And ironically, Saratoga Ice Hockey is known as, guess what? We are the blue streaks. I right. couldn't believe it. Love when it. I saw that your husband's team was the blue streaks, I'm like, man, it's too ironic, right? But I got to <laughs> tell you, I want to steal this 212 to pass on to my kids and people around me. But I thought that this was amazing. I wanted to share two quick stories I thought that will go along well with this. So number one is I don't cook, right? It's just something I don't like doing. But yesterday's Mother's Day. So what do I have to do, right? I have to because I love my wife. I wake up and I make her breakfast, right? And so I'm the guy that sits there. And when I start to turn on the stove, I expect it to be heated instantly. But we all know what happens, right? A watched pot never boils. So here's the story I want to give you. It's 2010, 2011. 
I had been in real estate for a couple of years. I'd been an appraiser for six or seven. And in 08, I got my real estate license. And it was probably about two years after that. I was kind of like, man, I almost took a job at UPS with the union loading trucks. And I thought about getting into that because I wasn't quite getting the success I wanted in real estate. But something in the back of my mind said, man, I think I'm at 211 degrees. Now at the time, I didn't say 211 degrees, but I thought to myself, I feel like I'm almost there. And I stuck with it. And you know what? It was like three or four months after that, it felt like the floodgates opened up, right? The market got a little better and I had been putting in the work. And so I think part of the 212 degrees is also that when you turn on the stove, the, wat, the pot doesn't boil instantly. You got to give it time, right? So if you're doing the action steps, if you're doing the calls and the notes and the Popeyes and the social media work, if you're doing all the actions, don't expect tomorrow you're going to have $4 million in contract. But if you do it consistently, you got to keep the heat on for a long period of time and the good stuff will come. And that's what I tell new agents all the time. So that's what hit me right away is this is so true. I've experienced it in my own life, but this was super encouraging for me as well. A lot of the feedback on the comments has been that this was very motivational, Melissa, and thank you for sharing it. Uh, I can't wait. And I'm, I'm going to go buy uh, that CD. Is it a CD set, Melissa? Uh, yeah, there's CD and, and they have all different types of things now. So you can have an audio and CDs and, and whatever the case is. You know, and it's really interesting. It's one thing, you know, I, I love the word motivation, but it means take action. You know, it's one thing to be like, oh, I'm going to be motivated. No, be motivated to take action and, and make sure you put things into place. You know, that that's what really counts. And that's where I'm one of those, I'm a very visual person. And that's why I like a lot of constant reminders. That's why I like this, because when I put it on in the morning, it's just, if I start getting sidetracked or whatever, it's just, it's a constant, constant reminder. You know, one funny story about me um, yesterday, actually this was Saturday, because there is this lady who decided in our neighborhood, um, I saw on Facebook, decided to start selling flowers out of her house, this little florist, you know, downstairs in her, in her basement. So I thought, oh, I need flowers. I was going to take over to my um, mother-in-law. I said, I'll stop over here. Never been over there before, you know, and so I'll stop it. So I pull in and now we don't live where my husband teaches. We live in, you know, a neighboring city. And so I saw in her, um, in her windows, she had little football helmets of Madison, where, you know, the hometown of my, where, where my husband teaches. So I walk in and I'm talking to her and I said, so what is your connection with Madison? And she said, oh, my son is a fourth grader um, who plays football in Madison. Um, we lived there, but we just moved here a year ago. She said, but he still plays in Madison. They have open enrollment. I said, oh, he's not going to play here in Fairport. And she's like, oh, no, no. I drive him out to Madison every day. She's like, he is a, you know, he is a Madison blue streak through and through. I mean, he has grown up and they have this 212. And now I did not tell her that I was married to, you know, that my husband was the Mr. 212. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. So here was this, you know, again, they start them young there. And, but it's, it's a mindset that's embedded, you know, and I think where, you know, I, I think the greatest thing that that shows too is support, is 212 support. And that's one thing that Christian and I and all of us together really look to support each other, support all of you to grow your business. That's, that's what we're here for. You know, that's what it's ultimately designed for. And so I hold myself responsible to bring forth a, you know, a 212 effort every day to help you. I mean, years ago, I had to put together a mission statement. And I, I it's one of my morning affirmations that I say every day. You know, my mission is to challenge, motivate, and inspire. Challenge you to new ways of thinking, motivate you to take action, and inspire you to reach heights you never thought possible. And so every day I wake up and say, okay, I've got to apply something in my mission that's going to help all of you succeed, you know, that's, when, and so with going along with that, again, we love your stories. We love your success stories. I mean, never hesitate to send one of us a, hey, I tried this. This is what I did because we love to support you and cheer you on and congratulate you or help you with obstacles with that. Um, and again, if you did not receive one of your um, green bracelets, I have some others to send out to all of you. So please email me with one of your action items that you've taken action of and your home address so I can get those uh, sent out to you. Well, Melissa, thank, thank you so much for doing the bracelets. Thank you so much for 212 degrees. That was amazing. 
let me give you a sneak peek of next week. So last week I sent out an email and I said, hey, everybody, uh, you know, what are some topics or what are some you know, things that you'd like us to talk about? And I did get some emails and, uh, and, and it was when, when you get, to, when people compliment you, like I always feel like I, I'm bragging if someone comments me, but here's what the email said. It said, Christian, you seem pretty, pretty internally motivated are you naturally that way or what do you do to keep yourself motivated with your hiking and your running and your business? And so I had to think about that a little bit. So last <laughs> week I started preparing it and I'm uh, kind of putting the final touches on it. But next week we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about what you need to stay internally motivated and disciplined. And let me give you a sneak peek. It involves a cat a CD and it involves my church. So three C's, a cat, a church, and a CD. I'm going to share with you what helps me stay internally motivated and disciplined. And some of it is right here. I'll give you a fist bump through the screen, Melissa, 212 degrees. That was amazing. Thanks so much for sharing from your heart on that. Very motivating for me. So thank you. Absolutely. And you had me intrigued uh, for next week. So we'll be all tuned in to, to see what all of those have in common. So and again, uh, Hannah Nation, um, keep doing what you're doing. And I know we're talking you know, to all of you here who do take on a 212 effort every single day. Uh, so keep up the great work, keep doing what you're doing. And we look forward to uh, working with you, supporting you and celebrating your success for many weeks, years and you know, years to come. Yeah, thanks. It's uh -huh. hot here, but it's cold outside. So I got my Howard <laughs> Hannah hat back on. So thank you, everybody. See you next Monday. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.